Well, folks, we knew this day would come. When the Olympics began, we knew that one day it would end. That day has come. It's me, Frex. I'm here with Triborough Trina. What's going Trina? on? Sad day. Sad day. I don't know how we're going to move forward. I just, you know, I feel so silly now that we, the last time we were together, we were over it. And now over. I can't believe it's done. I can't believe Celine. I can't believe all the moments have brought us here. I know. I got back into it after we spoke. We had such big days in athletics, AKA track and field. I just... I am renewed. I am delivered. And now it's over. I know. Yeah, last uh, last time me and you got on here, we were uh, gold. We were we had overdosed on the gold zone. But you know what? Let's just stay straight and plain. That was our fault. It was. No one put a gun to our head and said, hey, guys, go into the gold zone for 16 hours a day. Watch <laughs> it on your phone on the train. Have it with you while you're at work. Bring yeah. it in the shower. Like nobody told us to watch that much gold zone. So, okay, I, we'll, I we'll, we'll get to like how, how the gold zone revolutionized everything. But first, part of what got me back fully, track and field had some fantastic events after that that just, I was so sold. I mean, the girls, the track and field, the men were good. Yeah. But the women are like, I don't even understand how like, they're like we're elegant. the same people. They're, they're like gorgeous. Elegant gazelles. They're, they're like, literally they're models, it's and they're these they're like these hardworking model assassins. Yes, it, it's breathtaking. And they so, are fashion. They're fashion. They're fun. Everyone does TikTok. Like they're funny. Yeah, I don't get how like I'm the same species as them. I know. It's so unbelievable. They're so strong. They're so kind. I feel like you can see that they're kind. Kind, gracious. They all have baby gracious. faces. There wasn't a female Noah Lyles. And well, okay, so let's that. talk. Okay, so a couple points. We're going to get to the closing ceremony, the astounding handoff from Paris to LA in just a moment. But let's run through a few things that have occurred since the last time we spoke. Okay. First of all, breakdancing. I did an episode with Kyle right after the we watched the women's breakdancing on Friday. And I actually took the YouTube down or I put it on private because I started to have survivor's remorse because I like <laughs> everyone else was piling on making jokes about Ray Gun and and then when I saw how how much she was getting dragged to hell, I just didn't want to be someone who had contributed to that because it made me think like, you know, when I would rap, like people would make fun of me and I would get defensive. I'd be like, you don't know what's in my heart, bro. And you don't know what I've been through. You know, actually I'm good. So actually leave me alone. Yeah. Yeah. So I just started to feel a kinship towards Raygun where I felt bad. I think the audio is still up because I don't know how to take it down so you could find it. But I wanted to get, <laughs> but I, I, what I was saying in that episode was that I really felt like the Olympic committee did these girls dirty in the way that they did not set them up for, for greatness. They gave them no visual aesthetic, no vibe. They had them out there in broad daylight, like the fucking hunger games. They looked like they were at sea world. It was sea world yes. seating. Okay. It was sea world seating. Yeah. It was like, like that, there was the no way sauce, the stands were, it's so like, that's how you watch Shamu. There was no sauce. So there was no splash zone, bro. Unfortunately, <laughs> there was no splash zone. They gave them no vibe, no lighting, no ambiance, no people, no people gathered around, which is like a lot of like break dancing, you know, people in a circle, people are hyping people up, whatever. But then I watched the men's the next day, a little bit of it. Um, and they at least gave the men the dignity of having their final battle be at night. Yeah. So you at least have a little bit of a nighttime vibe. They had these girls out there from start to finish broad daylight. I really feel like they were done dirty. Interesting. Wasn't, I thought, what was her name? Ami? Ami, Ami yeah, B-girl Ami, Japanese. I thought that was at night when her and Lithuania Zurai girl were. Was it? I, I felt like it was dark and not, it was at least twilight. And, it was and at least twilight. As but I we needed with, it to be dark of night. There are some women that twilight suits them. Yeah. <laughs> Um, there's some people that Twilight suits yeah. them. Mm -hmm. Um, a Lithuanian in a durag probably needed Twilight. 
Yeah. I mean, she but that was could be the vibe of Lithuania. And here's the thing. Raygun could be the vibe of Australia. Maybe they're like Dickies down, you know? Well, so the head of the Australian Olympic Committee came out and was like, I, she's like, oh, I love Raygun. Raygun is the best female breakdancer that we have for Australia. And I'm really disappointed by the way that these online trolls have really been out to get her. I, I love Regan. She's a wonderful person. And then I was like, fuck, man. This yeah. can have like serious, just because it got so big, like how bad she was getting clowned. And like, it was so, dude, it was so funny. It was so funny. What do you want me to say? But the, just the global nature of the way she was getting clowned, like that could do real harm to her mental health forever. It can. And, you know, even Ice-T came to her defense and was like, well, maybe not her defense in general, but of anyone who had anything to say, because a lot of people had a lot to say about breakdancing in general. And he's like, maybe I'll, and I'm taking liberties because it was a tweet, it, mm, but this yeah. is me being his voice, but he's like, uh, Ice-T as Detective Tutuola on Law & Order SVU. Um Maybe I'll see you in four years when eating dick is an Olympic sport. Like he was getting <laughs> at people on Twitter. <laughs> like yo, shut up. That's so funny. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's a fine line because obviously it wasn't good. So, um, and we're just it was it, it's it's so shocking to see something not be good at the Olympics when we've been wall to wall greatness. And I think it was also disappointing for the culture to have this be the first year and have people argue in the first place whether or not it's a sport, the same way people argue whether or not cheerleading is a sport or like, you know, certain other stuff. And so it's just like, damn, son, like, this is not how we're putting on for our city when people are already like really breakdancing as a sport. And then this bitch comes out doing a bunny hop, you know? Yeah. I mean, the memes. The memes were, went hard. <laughs> they went hard. Actually, I saw a video of Raygun today with all the Australian other athletes mm. before the closing ceremony. And she looked happy as could be. She was, and they, they all circled around her and they were cheering and she started breakdancing again. Just to show that she has the Olympic spirit and she has the spirit of Save the Last Dance and she mm -hmm. will not be deterred. Okay. Well, you know what, Raygun? God bless. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know what, Raygun? God bless. <laughs> um, did you have any other thoughts on the break dancing as a Bronx native? Um, I'm glad that what's his name? Didn't he get the gold? The Maldonado? What was his name? I don't. I, I made Christopher that. Christopher Santa. Imagine. Um, it came oh. down to the dude from France named Danny Dan, and then I think like Vic, Mr. Victor. I don't remember his name. Mr. Phil? But it was an American from Florida, right? He no, won no, the gold? no. I think, I don't think so. Oh, he won the bronze. He won the bronze. Yeah, that was some bullshit, bro. Yeah, I know. For no, for no Americans to win is kind of insane. I mean, he got the bronze. No, but they should get gold. I don't know, because the Japanese got the sauce, even though we beat a Japanese dude to get the bronze. But I don't know. Listen, other people have sauce. What do you want me to do? But um, it's just like, you know, a lot of people online, like I follow Crazy Legs, you know. I saw him speak speak on it today, yeah. Yeah, and it's kind of just like, who was contacted about this? Like, bro, people are still alive. Like the people who were there, maybe even if they weren't the one who started it, and like some of them were, but even if they weren't, they were there when it started. They were like in the room. They were on the block. Like the original breakers. Yes. Yeah. So like, it, are we getting crazy legs on a call? Are we getting anyone from like Queens or the Bronx or whatever on a call? He Say, said oh, that he was way, not asked to be a judge, but if he was asked, he would not have done that. I can and understand And he also that. said that, he also said that Reagan, it was... Whoever allowed her into the Olympics is a war criminal. However, she does not – he didn't say it like that. But however, she doesn't deserve to get dragged on this right. level. But she's just – she's like, I don't – he goes, um, 
I don't know if your friends are being honest with you. That's important. He goes, I think your friends are not being honest with you about your skill level. And that's important. And it's just like, okay, even if she was the best that Australia had to offer, and we can wrap on this with Reagan because we're done with like fucking trashing her. But it's like, okay, even if that's the best that you had to offer, then but why is it still being offered? Every country doesn't have an Olympic athlete in every fucking sport. So the, it begs the question, like, bro, I'm not going to just suddenly be like, uh, I don't know, the Lincoln log fucking Olymp- Olympian for the U.S. just because we need a Lincoln log. I don't know. The I'm what? Just th- you know Lincoln logs? You know <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, imagine they, they enter some bullshit into the Olympics and they're like. Right, right, right. Nah, like, this, not everybody has to compete. This bitch be picking up those sticks, bro. That being said, I think that Ray Gunn, she's already going to blow up. Like, she's already blown up. And I hope that if she can not let this kill her spirit, she has a nice long life ahead of her. And I wish her well. Yeah, have fun doing other stuff. You like how I said, oh, I took down the last episode because I was too mean. And then I just went and did it right again. <laughs> as long as we say God bless a bunch of times, we're not it, mean. It, exactly. All right, moving on to the next person that we got bless. Our boy Noah Lyles. Oof. I got a lot to say. So last time we spoke, Noah Lyles had just won by a nose hair the men's 100 meter race and been crowned the fastest man in the world. And he was getting a lot of hate online. He's probably the most hated athlete. Maybe not most hated, but like most uh, clowned athlete. I don't know. Other than Ray Gunn. Probably Noah Lyles and Ray Gunn got the most heat at this Olympics. That's right. Say, online. Because of his uh, his style of just coming out and being antagonistic, kind of like playing the heel, clapping for himself, just being mad cocky, always saying controversial things about other people in sports, whatever. So he comes out to run the 200 meter and he comes out in his usual fashion. They call his name. He starts doing a whole dance routine, hyping up the crowd. He's trying to get these photos like he, he does what LeBron does, which we touched on last time where he intentionally does these poses and these movements where he knows what the photo he wants in his mind is mm-hmm. and he does this thing where he makes himself look like a pokemon because he loves pokemon what? so that i'm dead ass so that when um he like puts his hands in this way and then he like makes his face like a charmander is that i don't know what the pokemon he, is, is he's doing i don't know what the pokemon is called but it's one of those where he goes and then he does it so he's doing that in real life i know wow. what he's doing because i'm a media expert But not everybody knows that that's what he's doing. He's creating photos because then the photos go online and they put the fire coming out of his mouth and they make him look like the Pokemon. What a fucking herb. Okay, go ahead. (laughs) And by the way, when he did the race, I don't know if you saw, he took out the Pokemon card and he showed it to the camera and then he put it back in. Anyways, so he runs a 200 race and he gets cooked. He came in. Well, look, he came in third, so he didn't get, you know, roasted. No, he didn't. He didn't medal. Yes, no, no, he got bronze. He did get bronze? He got bronze. Okay, so um, the quiet man from I can't remember which country, the serious Botswana, man. Botswana. 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 Yeah, he was running for his mother, and he just kept it 100. He was just quiet, no show no show time, whatever. And then Kung Fu Kenny got second. Kenny. I love Kenny. Kenny's hot. I, Kenny's we, hot. Kenny. Wait, Kenny's kind of hot, though. Hold on. Kenny's uh, traps are a little too big. but he's No, not. you don't like Kenny? No, no, the traps. The traps are okay. too much. I like Kung Fu Kenny style. So he gets second. Noel him. Isles comes in third after, like, promising, swearing up and down. Like, I got this. There's no way I'm losing. Whatever. You know, all athletes are confident in their way. But for whatever reason, he's just annoying. He's just mad annoying. So he comes in third. And as soon as he gets to the finish line, he falls to the ground. Here and they comes. didn't show this. This wasn't on the main broadcast, but like all the fan videos from the stands. I think I sent you one. Yeah. He again creates a photo of him on one knee with his hand like this, recreating that um, pose of that thinking man. Then he starts (laughs) crawling along the sidelines, crawling like this and asking for water, which I understand he needs water, whatever. Then he just falls to the floor and everyone's like, wait. Is he like pretending to be sick right now because he didn't win after putting on that show? Then they put him on a wheelchair. Then they take him out. And then two minutes later, they go, oh, uh, it's just been announced Noah Lyles has COVID. Yeah. Um, Cool. What? (laughs) 
cool. Like just now he has COVID? Just now he got COVID? When did he get that? Because when he was doing Save the Last Dance, he's doing Save the Last Dance too. Him and Ray got not so different. That's what I'm saying. I think um, that's actually what you're saying. So. Yeah, that's what we're saying. So when he came, yeah, so he, like five five minutes ago when he was doing this whole song and dance, he seemed quite healthy. Yeah. Now he lost after talking that much shit. Now he has COVID. Right. And, and then I go, fuck. I'm not, well, I'm not COVID else. police. I'm not, you know, I'm not COVID police, whatever. Like, I'm pretty chill about it. However, at the Olympics, if you are, I mean, he was doing like Charmander breathing like everywhere. You could get someone else sick and ruin their Olympics. Exactly. Bro, we still have relays. We still got the four we by 400. We still have hurdles. We still have hurdles. We still have Olympians. So that was a little disturbing. And then he did get the bronze. Then he, then he put a mask on. Anyway, any thoughts on him? Dork. Dork. Fucking dork. dork. Irresponsible. You're whack for that. You should have, if you weren't going to recuse yourself, like, listen, I don't know what you do. It's kind of like damned if you do, damned if you don't. I understand. Some people are just like, bro, everyone has COVID at this point. No one's even really dying like that no more. So guess what? If I have a fucking reservation at Carbone, I'm not canceling that shit because I'll probably never 100%. get that shit again. 100%. And the Olympics are like a reservation at Carbone. You'll probably never get that shit again. Probably never get that shit again. So. But then, the, but the thing is, the only thing is, yeah, getting COVID, who really cares? But the only, what if he made someone else so sick that they couldn't race? Um, I, That would be. I'm guessing from his persona that he would not care. Right. And then, by the way, I saw a video of him from last night out in the clubs. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Whatever. I'm done with Noah Lyles. I'm done. Moving on. Don't bring that shit to L.A. Don't bring that shit to L.A. No Moving more. on. Yeah. Um. Just quickly, USA men's basketball wins gold yesterday. One of the most fun. As we do. One of the most fucking fun. I actually, uh, most of the stuff I, I was trying to like either watch on my phone or watch at home just so I could really pay attention. Mm -hmm. But I was like, I got to be out and about for this, for this gold medal yeah. USA boys basketball. I'm glad you So were. I went to a bar and then I realized like why, I feel like I have a pretty positive view of men in general because I surround myself with ones that I think are really dope. Yeah. And good. Yeah. And good boys. Mm -hmm. And then you get around just like a, a group of like loose male men watching basketball and problems come up that's right there was like multiple near fist fights there were these two guys i thought i was on the show in practical jokers how annoying these guys were being <laughs> i kept calling to kevin i go there's a camera here i go i'm not kidding where there's a camera here this can't be real this is like night at the roxbury but maga oh and then i go yeah. and i go i'm gonna have to i, I was like preparing i was hyping myself up i'm like i'm gonna have to put a stop to them yo don't because you hate that don't you hate when you're like all right I got to save my adrenaline because I'm going to have to fight men today. That's yeah. how I felt. I was like, oh, I'm going to have to, f I'm, no one else is going to do anything. I, this is going to fall to me. I know. I, I was like, that. I was like gearing up, blah, blah, blah. I had like my, my whole thing I was going to say. And then I was also going to turn to the whole room and I'm going to be like, and this should have been all of your jobs. Yeah. One of you should have stopped this. Anyways, yeah. it still was a lot of fun. USA got it. It was just amazing to see our three greats in their swan song get the gold. As like we knew we, we we knew they would get the gold, but it was a competitive game. It did come down to the last exciting minutes and it was awesome. It was a great game. Same thing same thing with the women getting gold today. Two the women today was incredibly mm. like nail biters, bro. Mm -hmm. Like I'm glad it wasn't a blowout. I'm glad we got the gold, but I'm glad it wasn't a blowout. Two great games. You know what I love now after this game? After that game? Tyrese Halliburton. He was on my I liked him at first in okay. the NBA. Then he was on my shit list from that um series with the Knicks recently mm -hmm. where he was being very annoying. Um, he's back on my good list because he went over there and he is considered a superstar. He did not play at all. Like, at was all, he an alternate all. or did something happen? No, he was just on the team, but there were other guys, you know, were ahead of him in the hierarchy. So he just okay. didn't play. He had such a good attitude about it. Number one hype man, first guy off the bench, always smiling, high fives, just like 
A plus aura, A plus hype man. I have such a great opinion of him now. And then he posted him with the gold medal yesterday. And it says, we need to do shit on the group project, but you get an A. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was mad funny. Him and Devin Booker, I have, I really, really like a lot now. Yeah. And then, yeah, that women's game was amazing too. They actually easily could have lost that. I came down to one point. And if that girl's, because that girl, um, France got that last shot. And if it was a three, they would have tied it. But her foot was a little too yeah, close. what was her name? Williams? Gabby Williams? I yeah, I think Williams. I bet she'll end up in the WNBA. She's really good. But you know what, though? It, but it shouldn't have come to that. I'll be honest. It shouldn't have come to that for no France. Shit. They missed mad layups. Like, mad like, rudimentary elementary first day of practice layups. I'm like, are y'all okay? But then they're like, sinking threes from half court. I'm like, are you like the curly sue of basketball? Where you could like spell mad long words, but then when they're like spell cat, they're like, eh. <laughs> it's weird. Um, it was weird. Anyway, two great basketball games, a great USA women's gold soccer, soccer. and then a little drama. Jordan Childs may have to give back her bronze medal in gymnastics. Bro, ain't no way. I they texted you last night. That's me. <laughs> I texted you that screenshot that she might have to give it back. I was like, oh, after seven tequilas, they tell me this. Yeah, yeah. I might have to take action. So basically, we had talked in a previous episode about Jordan Childs originally got fifth in the – I don't even remember what – was it balance beam, floor? What was it? Floor. It was her floor routine. And I, okay, so yeah. originally, Jordan Childs got fifth. USA did a challenge. The challenge was successful. It bumped Ju- uh, Jordan – I keep calling her Julia Childs – Jordan Childs up to third, which knocked this Romanian girl out who was literally had the flag on and everything and thought she won bronze. Jordan Childs knocks her out. Just yesterday, Romania then files a challenge saying that the USA didn't file their challenge within the allotted time. They missed it by like five seconds. Therefore, the challenge cannot be considered. Therefore, Romanian girl goes back to third. Jordan Childs goes back to fifth. Just a couple hours ago, USA challenges the challenge. They said, we actually have video evidence, whatever. It's back and forth, this, that, and the other. It's a fucking nightmare. This is the official's fault. This is not the girl's fault. Exactly. And as the fault of the officials, they should give both of these girls the bronze and keep it moving. We should never talk about this again. Exactly. And I have a question, but I do have a question for Team USA. Sound off. You don't don't know the difficulty it's being scored at before she even starts the floor routine like why wasn't this handled before she even saluted the judges i think that because if i know i'm competing for like 15.6 difficulty or whatever the fuck mm-hmm. i'm and gonna uh, starting me at like a 14.7 i'm gonna be like mm, what are we doing this will be a wrong answer wrong answers only but i believe that the gymnast tells the judges what moves they're going to do. And based on the moves that they're going to do, there's a, a difficulty score that is set. Right. And then if you deviate from those moves, your difficulty score is lowered. Oh. Now, this is me making this up. But this feels right to me. I don't think that's it, babe. Because they I, were like, and what do I know? But they were like... That was what the challenge was, that what she should have been, the rubric with which she should have been scored in the first place, like that should have been higher to begin with. So it's like if y'all want to. No, I don't I don't think it was about the starting place. I think it was about the ending place. So I think they knew what the starting place should have been. The judges and the U.S. agreed. But then they deducted something from her difficulty score, which the U.S. did not agree should have been deducted. Okay, that's not how I understood it, but who cares? You know what? You might be right. Yeah, I think it was like that the the starting score should have been higher. So if she only got like a 95 on the exam is like, okay, but 95 of this higher starting point is a higher result of like, you know, I uh, whatever. I don't think they were arguing she was perfect. I think they were like, she was doing harder shit than y'all had her whatever slated for. So basically... But it's not, way, the it's, it's not, not the giving, gymnast's fault. They exactly. should both get the bronze. Either way, we're not giving medals back. Where are they doing we're, that? I'm sorry, Paris. Are you broke? <laughs> Do you need my medal back? You don't got money? 
Go get a so little chisel a and take another little piece out of the Eiffel Tower and make another medal. Call the Grim Reaper and the Smiths. Call the Smiths. And why don't you fire up another medal for us? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The fuck? Go to a scrapyard and get the fucking copper bronze or whatever. The fuck is wrong This will with cause you? drama for years to come. I can feel it. It's broke boy behavior asking for a medal back. Eesh. <laughs> Where they do that at? Ugh. Couldn't be me. Listen, I would literally swing that metal around like a nunchuck and be like, "You need to come get it <laughs> if you want this shit." Come get it, babe. Yeah. Wait, nunchucking. Let's put a pin in that. Could be a good event for 2028. That would be good. That's what I heard. That, 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 that's what I heard. Okay, a couple more things mm. that made me cry t- on the very last day, just to touch on briefly. Uh, Brittany Griner getting the gold medal. Here's the national anthem, starts weeping. I know. We cannot forget that she was actually supposed to still be in the gulag. She was sentenced to nine years. Unbelievable. In the gulag. She was not supposed to be here. I know. And rightfully so, she in the past... Uh, would protest the national anthem, rightfully so. Um, but being that we did trade a, a mass murderer to get her back, we moved hell on earth to get our girl back. We did. We got we to gotta give it up for whoever made that deal. Yeah. And so I think it meant a lot to her to hear, to be standing in America, standing home with her family and her friends, winning a gold medal, and hearing the national anthem, she did start weeping. I was very moved by that. Additionally, things I was moved by. Did you see the marathon runner Kinzing Lamo from Bhutan today? Is that the one who quit and was like... She didn't quit. She oh no. finished yeah. so long after everyone else. Oh. She came in 80th place. It took her four hours. This is the outdoor marathon. Okay. She's one of only three athletes that came from Bhutan, which is like a Himalayan type of nation, I believe. Mm-hmm. And... um only woman and she just was like i just have to finish this race and um so she was taking so long like hours after everyone else that the people of paris lined up on the streets and started running with her no that's yeah so sweet yeah and then when she finished she got a standing ovation like people actually stayed at the finish line to see her finish yeah man because you're there and you did it that's the olympic spirit you did it that's why i was so like listen i'll never be at that level of anything in my life but to win like how people are like it's an honor to just be nominated like that's real bro to when when i was watching um who was crying when they got a silver they were down bad who was it (laughs) um i think it was like one of the in the relays who came in second from the women donna who remembers because it was so much we've seen a hundred relays because hundreds of relays I know, but there was some second place team that was like weeping. And I'm like, guys, you have a silver fucking medal in the Olympics. Oh, they were weeping because they were upset. Oh, I thought you were, I thought they were weeping because they were overjoyed. I think it was a disappointment. No. And maybe it was France today. Mm. Maybe it was the French women today. I don't know. But um, that's a wonderful story about the athlete. Yeah, and just all the Boots random just civilians like, coming out and just running the 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 rest of it alongside her, hyping that her up. That is what it's about. That That's is what, what it's about. about. That's what I'm a, here, this, and I may not ever be here again, and I'm going to finish. That's what it's about, boys and girls. No, there um, was a dude yesterday in the dude's marathon who, I don't know what happened, and he was like a famed runner, and at like mile 18, I think he just like stopped. He was like, that's it. I'll never run another marathon again. Gave away his spikes. Really? Or like, yeah. Damn. Yeah. So I thought that's what you were talking about. I see. I did, so much greatness. I even missed that shit. Um, if, okay. I was no, gonna say, no. can we talk about the women's four by what four hundred uh, uh, from yesterday relay? Is that on your agenda? Yeah, of course. Unbelievable. Okay. Sydney. McLaughlin yeah. Lavroni. Yeah. I turned to my dad. It was because. I also have like the timing of these Olympics where like I can watch it at 2.30 p.m. 
or 10 30 PM, you know, when they do the replay. So I turned to my dad, we're on the couch last night. And I was like, it was the men were about to run. And I saw that the women were coming after. I was like, I feel good about the men getting gold. I said, but understand me when I say this, the women are going to smoke everybody. And he was like, why do you say that? Cause he had seen it earlier in the day and he was like trying to be, and he was like, what makes you say that? I was like, bro, we have the, like, I know that bowl from the Netherlands is like fast or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, Femke, Femke bowl. Fam, nobody's touching Sydney. Nobody's Nobody. touching Sydney. And we have four women that are not to be fucked with, that can not only hold their own, but can gain a lead not as big as Sydney. I said, when I knew she was second, I was like, bro, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. We're going to smoke them. So the men go, and it was so The men got disqualified, was... didn't they? No, they won gold. All right, so we're talking about two different events. Yeah, they had like a thousand relays to yeah, your Yeah, point. it's too many relays because one of the the four leg men from the other day, the men got disqualified, the U.S. Why? Men. A bad transfer? A bad baton yeah. flip out of the zone? Yeah, out of the zone. Unbelievable. No, no, they won gold yesterday, the men's four by 400, and then the women won gold right after them. But like I said, um, each of these women, it was it was like – the women won and it wasn't even close. Not even close. I was watching that one at the bar too. People were losing their shit. It was unbelievable. Sydney McLaughlin just like I don't I don't know. I don't know. She just all keeps I, getting faster. All She's I could hear in my head world record six times. Yeah. All I hear in my head is ah, 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 ah. Bald Eagle, baby. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I can't even do it. I can't even like do imagine it. just a bald eagle flying behind her. So funny. Um, and shout out the Irish team. We got to talk about my girls because they were not even Irish are not even good at this at all. And they and came those in four fourth Irish by girls, like a hundredth of a second. They came in fourth. I shared like that really long interview with them, but they're just like, we just can't even believe we can't even believe. Of course, it's hard to not feel like it's your fault when you're the anchor, and you. I feel like it's my fault, and I let I let my girls down. But you know, we just can't even believe that we're here, and everyone in our country has been so nice. It was beautiful. I was. I that actually made me cry as well. That did make me tear up when I saw them come out. I was like, I was like, what team is this? So green. I never I seen so green. I never seen this uniform in my life. And it was the Irish. And I said, you know what? I'm rooting for you for silver because obviously USA. Right. Um, and then when I saw they came in fourth and then when I saw by how much, I was like, damn, son. But I'm going to follow them. They're a team to follow. They'll be back. They're cuties too. Yeah. Um, closing ceremony. I told you uh, skip the first two hours. And um, I sure did. And you sure did. So let me just fill you in on what you missed. Okay. So their closing ceremony is probably like what normally would be considered for like a traditional opening ceremony. It was very okay. like Cirque du Soleil. Let me tell you something. They heard loud and clear our complaints about their dancers. <laughs> I don't know what kind of threat of, you know, prison they had these dancers under, but nobody missed a fucking beat. <laughs> okay. I DVR it. I'm going to catch up. But for the purposes it was of this podcast, I skipped. It was goofy as I mean, look, it was so it was so oh, French. Well, the thing about the closing ceremony is like the closing ceremony is like the flight home from Cancun. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the flight to Cancun, you're just like, that's the opening ceremony. You're hyped up like, like with the possibility of what might happen. Can -can, like, am I going to get ribbon. fingered at single senior frogs oh or not? Oh or not? Like, am I? What are we about to get into down in Cancun? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. So Take it's like me this, to the Doodle River. Like, you don't even know. You're, you know, so that's yeah. the opening ceremony. And the closing ceremony is the flight home. Okay. You're pregnant. You ha have $16,000 in credit card debt. You have an appointment at uh, Planned Parenthood, like, waiting yeah. for you when you land. You're so hungover. You're bleeding out of your nose. Yeah. Um. So that's the closing ceremony in general. But France, I mean, they had this um, – our, our parkour Grim Reaper was back, which is nice. Always nice to see him. I miss him. I know. You know, I miss I him. I miss him. I miss <laughs> him. I missed him. And when he, and when he when that parkour Grim Reaper came back on the screen, I said, babe, 
Babe, where you been? We'll always be family. I know. We'll always be family with him. Because because you were either there or you weren't. And we shared a moment. And mm-hmm. we were we were there, you know? And and that's what um the closing ceremony, it was very traditional. It was two hours it was two hours of being very traditional. It was like Cirque du Soleil, there there there's all these uh the Grim Reaper and then that lady in the armor that carried the flag in the opening set. I don't know. It was all their little characters came back and there's all these Good. little men forging the rings, you know, it was whatever. But then it made me really, really grateful for that unhinged um, spectacle that was the opening ceremony. And I'm like, I'm so, so glad that they chose to just go out of their minds and just be so incomprehensible in that opening ceremony because that's what got everyone hooked, I think. It's How true. Rid- because when I saw this closing ceremony, I was like, if they had just kept it like this and done it in the stadium like this and done this little Cirque du Soleil shit, we would not have invested in this like we did. But that opening ceremony where there was just so much to grab onto, there was so much to meme, there was so much to just be in awe of, there was so much to love and to hate and to yeah. just be confused by – that I think, I think as a whole, because we're such a social media generation, this is such a social media Olympics. There was just a full buy-in from the public after that. Like, yeah, true. let's yeah. do this. And it wouldn't have happened if they had given us the energy that they gave us in this closing ceremony. Now that applies to about the two and a half hour mark. And at about the two and a half hour mark, Trina, it is time for the traditional passing of the baton. Before, before the so, handoff, can I just say, yes, the note that they didn't listen to mm-hmm. was when we talked about how long it took that motherfucking horse to, to get, get over that motherfucking river. Yeah. Because guess how long it took to get the rings in the sky, bro? Yeah. Yeah. Like six and- commercial breaks. I was, my dad was driving home. I was watching on my phone. We're on the Taconic. I'm like, oh my God, I'm falling asleep. I'm yeah. like, and what? Yep. Oh, and I was just like, get it up. We know where it's going. You're telegraphing what it. this is. It's we the ring. It. It's the missing ring. We're going to bring it up. And it took that bitch in gold, um, that little pixie dust lady. It took her 45 minutes to get down from the rafters. So she takes 45 minutes getting down. They take 45 minutes putting the ring back up. And in between, there's just a whole lot of twirling and whatever. It was, you know, it was beautiful in its, in its way. But but I'll tell you what didn't take too long. Okay, go. What didn't take too long was for Mr. Thomas Cruz, Tom Cruise, to get his ass down from the top of that stadium. That's right. Okay. He bungee jumped from the That's rafters right. down to center stage. And he came down and gave the message loud and clear. It's America's turn, motherfucker. And we're going from class to trash. Exactly. Exactly. He gave the message loud and clear. Like, yeah. I'm glad you have culture. We're going to barge in before you're even finished. It's the best part. Like, like, France wasn't China even done. Shop. France wasn't even done. And you just hear, burn it. USA motherfuckers back to back world war champs you're welcome France (laughs) it was that energy back to back world war champs was the exact energy so Tom Cruise comes down bungee jumps down gets the flag gets on a motorcycle rides it out of the stadium then it goes to like pre-taped things He he rides his motorcycle through Paris onto like a military plane Gets on the plane, takes a flag, bungee, um, skydives out of the plane into L.A. Then he's on the Hollywood sign. And then I say, okay, I bet 30-minute pilots are going to be the next um, Olympic event for 2028. Screenwriting, competitive screenwriting. And, oh, okay. That's good. That's good. Imagine that. So then then what happened? Oh, yeah. Then it goes to, like this beach party with Billie Eilish and um, Red Hot Chili Peppers. And I just go. Well. Right. Trash. No, no. Yes. No, no, no it's no. gonna be good. Listen, listen. First of all, I love what they did with the Hollywood sign, how they turned the two O's into like the two O's of the five rings, whatever, of the Olympics. Um, the whole time, by the way, that this sequence was playing, 
they were playing Chili Pepper. Not maybe not the whole time, but they were playing my favorite song by the Chili Peppers called By the Way, which is one of my Midget Mac. Talk about who the taste you got to win a one girl in the band of the in the moon, the dog town skateboards. Um, standing in line. Uh, anywho, I loved it. I have heard some troubling news about the Chili Peppers lately. He's dating a 19 year old, but and then I heard before that he like. I mean, trigger warning, we'll call it what it is. He, like, did something awful. Whatever. Okay. Google it if you want because it's there. Okay. We're not talking about it on this pod. And it was really disappointing because I love them. And I just yeah. bought my daughter a Chili Peppers t-shirt. And when she was wearing it, someone was like, hey, you know Anthony Kiedis dot, dot, dot. And I was like, no, I didn't know that. I don't think I knew that either, but I will Google it. So, Yikes. Um, a very then LA Snoop, thing. Snoop and Dre came out, and then Billie Eilish came out. I love that Billie Eilish song. I want you to stay. <laughs> and then um, and then that was that. The handoff was complete in a completely unhinged and American way. It made me hyped up. It just made me hyped up. Like, what are we going to do for this? I'm go- We're going, by the way. We have to be going. All right, so... Metal count, USA and China tie for 40 gold. USA smokes everyone for total medals with 126. Above and beyond second place, China. Um, I'm going to say my big winners, winners and losers of this Olympics. My For me, big winners, women in sports. Number one, women in sports. 65% of Team USA's medals won by women. And you know what, Frex? Go on. <laughs> I just feel like women's rugby like had a moment. You know what I mean? Like we were all obsessed with women's rugby. Like that that women's came out of nowhere. Women's soccer won gold again. Where are women's- the men? What are we? What are the women getting paid? I make more than most women in the WNBA. That's insane. Yep. Um, just the track and fit. Every just, I just think women in sports he, huge win. Huge win. And I think um, another huge winner, I'm going to say it, Peacock. Peacock nailed it. Yeah, they did. They nailed it. They did exactly what they said they were going to do. They allowed us to get this involved. The opening ceremony and TikTok set it up where people wanted to be involved, and Peacock allowed it allowed it to happen. Yeah. It was great. Thank you so much for getting Peacock. I saw you posted on your stories that you uh, canceled it. but it's Peacock is at- no longer with us. Right. Well, you you said it's until the 24th. So do you care if I like watch Housewives? Between of now course, and then? girl. Okay, go off. Thanks, babe. I'm going to go Are off on Are you kidding Peacock. me? Go off. <laughs> um, overall, I think I didn't know I was going to do this with the Olympics. I just kind of had the idea where I was like, oh, I'm going to cover the Olympics. But I didn't know how into it I was going to get. And ultimately, I think we really needed this. Yeah. I needed it as an individual. I think we needed it as a nation. And we needed it as a world. And that's corny, but I honestly believe that. No, I believe it too. Yeah. I believe it too. Thank you for letting me join you on this journey. Thank you. Shout out Kev. Shout out Kyle Raps. Look, it's check it's, out the t-shirts. Yeah, don't call it a uniform. Atlanta, nineteen ninety-six. You wasn't there. Wasn't you wasn't bitch. there. Everybody else. Me and Flex um, were there. <laughs> final thoughts. I'm just so happy. Well, I'll give one more final thought. I'm Good. just so happy that I let myself not be cynical. I mean, like obviously, I've said I say like you know snotty comments, whatever like make jokes about stuff, but I approach this with such an uncynical, open-hearted excitement for yeah. to see all these people succeed. And having allowed myself to do that, I like experience all the love and the joy of watching this experience. And it's been wonderful. Yeah. I would say the same. It has been great. You learn these fun facts. I think the coverage was incredible. I think not just the access but also the quality for sure not just the quantity but definitely the quality the um of course they focus on americans more than anyone but when there was a story to tell we saw um the woman who won first place for kenya in one of the very long distance uh 
what was it? 5,000 meters or 10,000 meters or something. I think 5,000 meters. What a fucking story that woman had. So the coverage was great. It was so great to spend more time with you and like watch these things and be like, oh, I have homework, but it's fine. Um, and I don't know, I guess we outside for the winter Olympics in two years. A hundred percent. I'm already like, what's the next thing we're covering? Yeah. Yeah. We so, all need things that we can do together, like yep. as a people. Mm-hmm. I know it's corny, but we need it. We need stuff like this. We yeah. really do. We got to find our next yeah. thing to care about. We got to find our next thing to bring us together. Yeah. But until then, as they say in party, au revoir. Au revoir, my girl. Listen, everybody. Everybody's been rocking with us for the last two weeks. Thank you so, so much. And we'll find something else. We'll do it again. If not, yeah. where's uh, where's winter? Salt Lake? No. I have no clue. Don't matter. But I'm sure we know someone who's going. <laughs> All right, kids. Thanks, Frax. Thank you, Trina. You're the best. Bye, everybody. See you.